you generally the front cameras are better than the back cameras. Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. I don't know if I'm in or there, the, but I don't really no, care the, that the much. Way around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 So, so I'm here with Daniel Boyd, and uh, you are an independent researcher. I am indeed. Yes, and uh, you put forth uh, a theory yeah. that proposes, and I'm gonna give it a short description. You tell me where I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, from what I understand, basically, what you offer is a way to. Um, particleize information the same mm -hmm. way we do with physics. In other words, you yeah. literally offer alternative particle, not alternative, but you literally offer addition, particle, ad addition of particles of information, yeah. including the equivalent of quarks of information yeah. and yeah. things like and then build up from the ground up. Exactly. And you were, and I just asked you if it's based on Shannon's, Claude Shannon's theorem of information. Yeah. And you were giving me the answers why that, that is not the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. No, I mean, because the, the thing, the, the main, I think one of the main problems about my theory is what I've called it. So I called it emergent information theory. Yeah. And both emergence and information um, are both used in each, used in about 20 different ways. So you combine them and you've got 20 times 20 different ways <laughs> in which it could be interpreted, of which mine is one of those. Um, I was actually in contact with. Um, uh, Wolfgang Hoff Kirchner, he's, he's a, okay, yep. a, a, a retired uh, professor in, the, in Vienna. And he, he's also published a theory about emergent information. And there's about four or five of these theories, which all call themselves emergent information, and have some similarities. But um, I mean, basically, sort of the reason why I started out on my theory was because uh, sort of reading around, I was just getting really frustrated because I couldn't find the answer that I was looking for. And if you can't do that, then you start thinking, perhaps I can think of another answer. And the weird thing about it is, is that in, in spite of our phenomenal uh, sort of hard science progress as humanity, I think it's absolutely amazing that you've got a whole area around uh, mind, brain science, and all, all the rest of it, where basically even the fundamentals, fundam the, the fundamental elements aren't sort of um, nailed down yet. Oh yeah, there's, no. there's, there's still yeah. so many different competing, contradictory theories. Yeah, we operate as if there's some kind of a consensus at the core. No way, no, no way. There's no. completely different. You know, so I went to a, there was a congress I went to as well, the online congress a couple of years ago, and then that's about information, International Society for the Study of Information, and absolutely everything came along there. I mean, everything which is not physical science is basically, then it is information, and then it gets all sort of uh, vague and, um, and I was going to say that, no, not so much vague, because I mean, there are a lot of very, very quantitative approaches to various elements of information, starting with Shannon, which are, which are very highly, incredibly highly mathematical. I can't follow those at all, but I don't have to, because they're not actually the information I'm talking about, because <laughs> I've got a far more uh, sort of organic type of information what I'm talking about and that is really the substance I'm a, I'm a, a very literal substance dualist there's a, is the substance which is created by information systems uh, in order to uh, function the way they do that computers and brains have in common that they, they neither have a physical function I mean they, they, their, their function can result in physical effects like me talking to you, mm -hmm. but the fact that I'm formulating words is not is not something that you can you can detect. You can it, it's not a physical thing. Well, the Thought. words are the vi the, 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 the vibration of the, the vibrations air. of yeah. the, of the word. But, but I mean, you mean the, the meaning of the words? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But but, yeah. but can I can I just exactly the, exactly the information like, in content of it? Yeah. Because I'm trying yeah. to understand. Yeah. So you're saying that this thing that we can't measure in physical terms, which yeah. is the meaning of the words, yeah. you're saying that that thing is is the thing that information produces, or is the thing that, that information is, out of, made out of? It, it would yeah, be that, fair that, to that's, say that information is technically made out of meaning, so it's like... Um, it becomes meaning. Mm. Um, the, the, the point about so my, my, my emergence 
use the words of emergency, it's very much sort of the hierarchical organisation aspect. So like you're having physical reality, you start with, 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 with uh, quarks and you, and you become leptons and you become atoms and the atoms become um, uh, yeah, compounds and the compounds become materials and the materials become etc. So you have all those different layers and every layer has its own properties mm -hmm. which don't actually exist in the underlying layers. Like the classical example is the, the wetness of water. Uh, there, there is no wetness in an atom. Wetness is, is a property which only exists at a particular so, level. So this is something I actually, wrote, again, I'm sorry I'm yeah, cutting you off, yeah, but this yeah. is like a close to my heart example. Yeah, yeah. Because I actually wrote about this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where the, I see that philosophical equ uh, equivocation, I don't know if you're yeah. making it here, yeah. but between the wetness, the arising property of wetness yeah. and yeah. the arising property of consciousness, I yeah. see those as a confused example because the wetness of water yeah. is wet to an already experiencing unit. What the thing under question here yeah. is experience. Yeah, so you yeah, cannot yeah. compare those two. It's like that's the problem yeah, yeah, with yeah. consciousness. It's yeah, yeah. fundamentally different. Than yeah, ab else. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's purely. A, I mean, I only use the comparison because the wetness of water is something which. Which, uh, which, which, which we yeah. can more easily understand than yeah, you yeah, can yeah. people understand. Yeah, an atom isn't wet, but water is wet. So you, you're, you're seeing at different That's levels the, of organization. So you, you're explaining what the emergence is. What, yeah, the kind okay. of emergence I'm talking about. That's the hierarchical levels at which okay. uh, you, cry, you get non reducible properties at, at, um, uh, at each level. Okay. And, and, the, fa and uh, the fact that in general, that, that this, I mean, that is the very nature of all of reality is, is emergence. Yes. And I think it's really weird that science, um, I mean, it's not that it's sort of denied, but I think it's, it's not acknowledged the significance of that. And, and the conclusion I come to is that the reason why that is, is that scientists have focus. And any particular scientist will deal with a particular level of organization. So. I don't know, a, a hydro whatever physicist is only interested in the, 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 the material level. He's not interested in particle physics. So it doesn't really sort of, in, he's not interested in the fact that the properties he, and, the, and, the, and the laws and whatever he's investigating don't exist at a lower level because that's not his level. And I think that's the reason why, we, why the, the importance, the significance of, of emergence in the physical reality is, is not really acknowledged as it should be. And also sort of top down and bottom up causation that comes into that as well. Yeah. Now, I think it's really astonishing that most physicists really act as if everything, I mean, the, the theory of everything is the, the theory of the bottom level of reality. Yeah. And all the rest of it is, well, that's just sort of, it sort of comes, come, comes about, whatever. But it's all explained, basically. The ultimate explanation is when you can't break things apart anymore, you have sort of the very, very smallest physical particle or force or whatever else. Whereas everything which we study, that, that's just not the case. You cannot explain the atom in terms of um, the subatomic particles except by letting it exist or simulating it. You can simulate it as well. But if you're just given protons and electrons and, and, uh, and neutrons, purely given those three things, without bringing them together and seeing how they interact to create something new, you can never know that. And yet, that's just that's not really acknowledged in, in mainline science. Yeah, that, yeah. That that, that non-reducibility and the top-down causation as well. Because everything, every sort of assumes to assumes that it's bottom-up causation. The bottom level determines everything above it. Take a, a, a crystal of salt. Mm -hmm. There's atoms in the crystal of salt. The positions of those atoms is 100% determined by the by the crystal lattice. I mean, they haven't got any kind of freedom. To, to, to sort of move out of that crystal lattice or whatever. So it's pure top-down uh, causation. You, uh, after a while, those things come together, and once they come together, they get trapped in that which they've create, created at a higher level of organization. Mm. So they have that, 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 that top-down causation uh, in the physical world, right? Um, which isn't acknowledged enough, but I, I don't think you can really... You don't really... think it's acknowledged enough? I feel like that, that's... Uh, I, I don't know physicists if really like being reductionists. That is true, but I mean there are. Yeah, the, the, I guess the, what the, yeah, the, the yeah, thing I'm yeah. having a hard time seeing is like, where do you see that what you just described as being denied, not not acknowledged? 
because, because because there's infinite yeah, things you can yeah. be aware of, yeah, yeah, and yeah. this just might might be a thing that is being omitted because it's not a focus thing. But it's not like it's being denied. You know what I mean? Like you can't yeah, deny top down, that. Top top down causation is 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 a bit of a. Uh, well, okay. Well, well. It's it's not it's not it's not really. I mean, there are some you people. Mean, you mean that by the in, on the emergent level, there's a stability area yeah. that is not giving enough, given enough credit. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Or or enough determinative influence. That that that's what it's about. Is that is that it? it people tend to talk. So you, science, science, hard scientists. Your perception talk. of the universe is deterministic. Oh yeah. Okay, absolutely. So that'll be that'll be interesting to poke into. Okay. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that's one of the things which is going to get interesting. Anyway, in, no, that's, the, will, that's yeah, the physical yeah. side. Yeah, that's yeah. the physical side. And 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 ninety nine point nine percent of the universe, as far as I'm concerned, you can explain completely in that way. Only one thing, and this is before you can sorry, <laughs> this is important because yeah, the answers yeah. of the fundamental yeah. will take the shape of the modality through which you're asking the question. So if your modality is the physical universe is the, the the most fundamental thing we understand and therefore therefore we measure things according to movement and mass and, and spin and all of that yeah then the fundamental answer yeah. will take that shape which is like we're looking yeah. for the most fundamental physical yeah. thing we can yeah. possibly think of yeah. but there are other modalities you can ask the question yeah, 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 yeah. that's the only thing I will throw into yeah, the yeah, thing yeah, yeah, okay yeah, go ahead yeah. but yeah um, um, yeah, what we both agree on, in any case, is that that is not complete. Yes. That is no complete explanation of everything which we, as humans, in any case, uh, deem important. Uh, basically, everything which we're interested in is, okay, it's convenient that we can now tame the atom and all the rest of it, and so we actually we can control the physical world. But what's important to us, our love stories and whatever, it's not physical. Um, and, but it's and, real. But it's but it is real. Yes. And that is that is the most important thing. You have sort of the also uh, philosophers who I mean Daniel Dennis and that sort of people who sort of just like to brush it off as if as an illusion, I don't consciousness know, and, or whatever. Uh, yeah, Daniel Dennis confuses and, me a lot. And, and and I think I mean I think so, sometimes I get, get the impression with him because he's a smart guy that he's just sort of saying it to tease kind of thing. No, you know but, but I, I, the best description <laughs> of his mind I've ever heard was by Joshua Bach. You know Joshua Bach? Mm -hmm. No? He's a yeah. German uh, yeah. cognitive scientist. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating guy. Yeah. Definitely very much on the spectrum. Yeah, yeah. He is one of those people that just whenever I hear him talk, I just I have this like serenity. I feel serenity. <laughs> I disagree with him on a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just yeah, the yeah. way he thinks. Yeah, it's so yeah, neat. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so German. It's yeah, so yeah. like I really love how he thinks. And uh, he once described Daniel Daniel Dennett as uh, trivially true. He said, uh, he said, he said, Daniel, <coughs> he's like, I, I listen to him, there's nothing that he says that I disagree with, yeah. but I also didn't learn anything. No. It's like what he says is just yeah. like an obvious thing. Yeah, yeah. And he says that uh, Daniel has, uh, I forget the name of the, he says that he thinks that Daniel has this condition that I forget the name of, yeah. in which he's so lit, he's so cerebral yeah. that he cannot even understand what people's issue is. Yeah, with the yeah. with the thing because he yeah. doesn't think of experience in the same term. Like no, you, no, no, no. You think of it in yeah. very like. Well, as you say, I mean, what, what, what is your starting point? And and and, and you build up from that. And yeah. His starting point is clearly, yeah, he, he has uh, so so definite uh, physicalist. Yeah, if if you just sort of if if that if anything else is blocked out of your mind that is non-physical, yeah. yeah, then these are the conclusions you draw. Yeah, yeah, logical. Okay, so this, is, the, this is the, so this is the, yeah. the, so we agree yeah. that that experience is real. Yeah, I would go yeah. as far as to say is the only sure real thing we can know about. You, yeah, you wouldn't go that far because you believe that there's an I, external reality uh, that are. I agree and disagree. I agree that that um, rationally speaking. It is indeed the only thing we can be sure about. I mean, I can't even be sure that, that you were thinking what yeah. exactly, whatever, that, that sort of stuff. I mean, that, the, the only thing that you actually can know um, is um, is your own experience. Right. The other side of it is is that I see fairly convincing evidence that, uh, apart from my own existence, that there is a physical universe that doesn't really give a damn about me. I mean, it's a pretty damn big place. Uh, and, and 99 Your love story is pretty cool, so I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's cosmic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, so yeah, yeah, back to um, sort of the theory. 
just like, um, yeah, the, where it starts, the theory. The, I think the easiest place to start, just like you sort of say, okay, we're starting with fundamental particles in, in, in physical things, and that's going up levels, and, and new properties are being introduced at every level of organization. The simplest thing, keep which going, keep going. I... Um, there you go, just expand the... No. the... The easiest way to start is computers. Okay. Because uh, they're a lot simpler and they're designed so we know how they work. Um, people talk about computers as if um, they contain uh, binary values. Okay. Which they don't. A physical computer right. only has uh, physical states. And a physical state could could be associated. I mean, okay, they're, they're designed to have sort of uh, paired physical states, so up and down, or magnetic left and right, or light on, light off, or sound blip, or silence, whatever else. All sorts of sort of on-off physical states. But the simple fact that if you were to design it in the opposite direction, what could be associated with one could just as well be associated with zero. Mm -hmm shows that the binary value, which is the basis for the function of the computer, is not, is not in any way a physical property. And people often talk about it as if it's a sort of a, okay, it's an associated physical property, it's an abstract physical property. It's a, they use all sort of the coy ways of getting out of the fact that it is not a physical property. If, I, if, if you get, take a, a bit from a computer, there is absolutely no way that you can know whether it's associated with a one or a zero. Unless it's in the context of a larger thing. It exactly. matter unless, if it was unless, the you, one unless, you know, unless you know the design. If it's you know the, the design, sequence of the ones and the zeros. Yeah. But you could flip them and it would be the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And yet the function of the computer is determined by, the, 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 by those ones and those zeros. So if you, if you change the physical design, it can have the same function in spite of the fact that it's using physically the opposite or completely different uh, media to to, uh, to to store those bits on. So the only thing that is real and does work is the relational value. It's not the it's not the thing itself. It's not the zero or the one. It's the sequence by which they appeared. But I understand what you're saying. You're yeah. talking about the fact that it's not no, right, right the, instanti down, the instantiation yeah. might be in physical matter. Yeah. But the thing itself is not the physical. It's something beyond. Well, the physical. basically, what what we do is we design we've designed a machine. Because we, have, we designed all sorts of physical machines with physical functions. Then you have cogs and levers and all that sort of stuff. And after a while, we realized, actually, we want to have a machine which can do informational things for us. So that's the brilliance of, of Turing. He, he, he thought up sort of the universal um, uh, the universal information machine, yeah. which performs yeah, what we call sort of logical functions. Well, what's a logical function? Lo logic is not a physical thing. Right. It's, it's a logical thing. Yeah, well, it's logical then. I mean, you get sort of those kind of circles, and yet it is real and determinative because what a computer calculates results in an answer on a screen or uh, the fact that you, you can hear music or whatever else. I mean, the, the, what, what actually happens in that smartphone or a computer or anything else is determined ultimately at the bottom level by those sequences of ones and zeros which are not physical entities. Right. And yet they're determinate. And I, and I cannot think of a way in which you cannot think of those ones and zeros as being real, because they have a real effect. So can I stop you for a second? Yeah. So I guess what I'm confused about, and this is probably a product of me not, be, not swimming in those waters enough. Yeah. I was convinced that people who actually understand computation, yeah. not the common folk, but like yeah. computer scientists. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I was convinced that, it, that it's understood that computation is another component of reality that is completely orthogonal to the laws of physics. It's just another component. It's not, it doesn't arise from the laws of physics. It's just another, that's why David Deutsch talks about it being yeah. one of the constituencies of, of the fabric of reality. Yeah. Because it's just another thing we can, it's a degree of freedom yeah. in the universe yeah. that doesn't arise from anything else. So it's fundamental. So, but, but you're saying that that's not that common? Like people don't really... Yeah, that, that, that's why my, my sort of, my very specific definition is necessary because computation as well, that's another word, which is used in, in very, very different ways. I mean, there, there are people sort of say, yeah, the universe is just a computer. 
because um, the properties of those atoms in that water in that water they interact and that interaction you can see it as a computation and therefore um, wetness is a, is a product of a computation. Right, right, so, right. So, and, that, and that also confuses everything because that's not the computation I'm talking about. I'm talking about real logical computation as in um, yeah, if then, that sort of stuff. Right? Right. The, the, the stuff that you have in, in, in computer programs. Okay. And there you basically you sort of same, see the same thing as in wetness. Mm -hmm. Individual bits, one zero, you can't do anything with one zero. I mean, it's, it, they're, they're meaningless. And yet, at a basic level, the only thing which is actually connected directly... They're not even one zero, by the way. One zero is just what we call it, but it's just, it's literally a toggle of a, of a logic gate, right? It's just like... Now, that's, the, just, that's the, the way that we the, create it. Those ones and those zeros is by toggling logic gates and whatever. But the ones and the zeros are actually the, fun, the, fun, the, 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 the fundamental particles, that's why I call them quirks, the fundamental particles of a computer, in the sense that they're the bottom level, they're, they're indivisible, elements of information mm. and everything which the computer does is built up of those uh, fundamental informational elements the ones right. in the series compilers so, and you, you, yeah you go into into uh, bytes 8-bit bytes and then you can make a decimal number but a decimal number is is just as emergent as the wetness of water in the sense that you, there's nothing decimal in a one and a zero right they're just binary you can't, they can't be anything other than binary. Right. So even at that very, very simple level of computation, of in computers, how we design computers, the creation of the number, I don't know, 64, which is uh, one, zero, 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 whatever, that is already hierarchical organization and, um, uh, and, and, and yeah, functional emergence. And it's not physical. I mean, you, you can't open up a computer and no, we, see, we the, agree on that see the number 64 yeah. or something, and yet it's there, it exists, and it determines the function of that machine, of that physical right, machine. Right, right. And that's where you get to the top-down causation, is that um, ultimately the, the very top levels, not even the, the bytes, but I mean the, the, the subroutines and, the, and, the, and all the rest of it, the programs, high-level programs that are, which we design and write into computers, they are what determine ultimately what those bit states are. Mm. Because you run a program and the program has an output and that output determines yeah, what, what, what pixels you see on your screen yeah. or whatever else or what gets rolls out of the printer or whatever else. Right. And, and that's what has determined the, the, the output it's not a physical thing. It's not a physical process. It's an informational process. So, but no. So okay. So, so we agree on that 100. percent Yeah. I non physical, guess, emergent, and right. So, so I guess. So I guess my question to yeah. you would be, uh, aesthetically. Yeah. Because we know that information in a Turing machine can technically, uh, really manufacture anything, so yeah, yeah. you can literally uh, simulate anything, yeah, right? Yeah. If it's too incomplete, yeah. then why would you then think that it's more plausible? Like, if you think that that's an actual, like, core component of reality, why, why are you still gravitating towards the idea that there's also a, what we call a physical reality plus this? You don't need anything else if you have that, because because that can create your experience. It can create yeah, yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. you're experiencing. Yeah, so yeah. Why, why? And it's much more neat. Like it, it, it actually completes itself much more. You know, you know it, it creates a nice one frame for the whole thing. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, my 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 reasoning for that for not seeing it as as primary um, is yeah, basically lying you back in a field in the, in the middle of the night, somewhere where they haven't got all this uh, <laughs> light uh, uh, pollution, uh, look up at the stars. I mean, the universe is so immense and existed for such an immense immensity of time before life started to exist on Earth and, and, um, and, and even longer, yeah, we've only been a fraction of a second right, of that. Right, and right. we're just on this tiny little sliver of a, of a coating on this planet, and and yeah, no, but I, but I think I feel, it's a bit anthropomorphic too. No, but I, but I feel I feel the, exactly the opposite. Can I tell you why? Because because yeah. 
if you think about it, yeah. what you're saying by saying that until life arose, yeah, yeah. that is assuming that you understand, you already understand what consciousness is and you understand what life is. Yeah, 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 and yeah. really, it's not, it's, the idea is not that what we perceive from behind our eyes is somehow the center of the universe. Yeah. It's that whatever we're made out of yeah. as the conscious unit, not yeah, the yeah. physical body, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's actually a commonplace thing. So it's like it's just yeah, it's just yeah, part yeah. of the constituents of everything. Yeah, yeah. So it's so it's actually the other way around. It makes yeah. us less special in that regard. Yeah. It's not that we're saying what we perceive is, is the yeah. We, we don't, yeah, there's a universe for sure. Yeah. But what it is, the universe itself has this. Because okay. So if you're saying that we're the only thing that exists, let's say, right? Yeah. Which I, I don't think anybody in their right yeah, mind yeah, saying that. Yeah. But, but if you think that this very unique thing, which clearly is unique, which is like conscious experience, right? Yeah. Happens so rarely. Yeah. And we happened to be that. We yeah, happened yeah, to yeah, be yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's way more anthropocentric. <laughs> then it's like, it's like yeah. do you know what the chances of that are? And then, yeah. you know, the, then there's a whole... The only real retort to it today yeah. is the is the um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, well, it's spacing talk, on the talk, term. Talk around it. Oh, the the. Um, <laughs> no, it's just gonna drive me crazy. <laughs> uh, the, the, okay, so like the fact that we are, that we, when when you are. When you are the thing, that that's that's the only place where you can ask the question from. Right? Yeah, 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 what, what's, yeah. What's the argument? Was um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I get you right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's I forget what it's, it's called. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but but, but the, that's the only real retort. The only yeah. real retort is well, you know, you happen to be that, mm. so that's the only thing you can ask the question. Yeah. Therefore, that's your explanation. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's something very unsatisfying about that. It's almost yeah. like a it's almost like a trick. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like but, yeah, but the, the, another another element there um, is I fundamentally differ, diff, differ from uh, David Chalmers when he talks about the easy and the hard problem. Okay, in what way? Uh, the easy problem isn't. Uh, he, he, he acts as if, and I think that's sort of based on sort of the fact that we do understand how computers work because uh, we design them kind of mechanistically, but not really mechanistic, it's not a physical mechanism, it's a, it's a logical mechanism, um, that it's easy to understand how com computation can take place, um, and extrapolates that to um, all of the, um, the non-conscious functions of the brain. And I, I, as I see it, there's the, the, the consciousness is actually kind of the easy part of the story, because at least we do have access to consciousness. No, 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 but he's the, what he's describing is what is the mechanism by which it arises. He's not saying that it's hard to understand it because we have it. Yeah, yes, I'll have to explain it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, what is yeah, the mechanism yeah, by which yeah. it arises from yeah. what we call physical? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the hard problem. Good right. correction. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, uh, no, um, but to, to me, um, yeah, okay, explaining consciousness um, is, 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 is hard because. Um, uh, uh, because we're confronted with it, because we, we experience it, so we need an explanation for it. We can't deny that it exists. Yeah. Or at least, at least saying, it's the end of any, one that does not need an explanation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and explaining it in physical terms is bloody difficult, so that's a hard problem. Uh, it, but yeah. what I differ, d disagree with him is that it's easier to understand, to, to explain the non-conscious uh, uh, functions of the brain. In fact, I think it's more difficult because at least consciousness we have access to in the sense that we experience it, we can communicate about it, so I can describe to you my consciousness, and right. if your consciousness is kind of similar, then you can, you can actually kind of look into my consciousness. But Wait, I can't... is he saying that the other functions of the... Uh... That's, the that's the easy part of the problem, he says. He says it's easy to explain, consciousness is the only thing which is hard to explain because of its specific properties which you can't explain in physical terms. Uh, he talk, he's talking about the fact that you're aware. Yeah. 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 So he's it's talking about the... Experiential uh, phenomenal consciousness. 
something tells me that we're onto something here. So, like, I, I could never understand mm. people like uh, Ani, Anil, or what's his name? Seth. The, Seth. Seth, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can never understand, like, their state of mind. Like, for example, I heard him on Sam yeah. Harris, and, you know, he's one of the leading people in the field, yeah, like, yeah, brilliant yeah. guy. Yeah. And he doesn't even see a hard problem of consciousness. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. what are you even how, talking how, about? Yeah, like, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. It's like, so, so the reason I feel like we're onto yeah. something because I feel like you're expressing a sentiment that is somewhere in the middle. Because I, yeah. because maybe the thing that is meant, not understood by the other side. Yeah. Because I, I totally see the problem, the hard problem of consciousness. That, if you try and explain yeah, it uh, in, uh, in, 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 in don't terms get me wrong. of physical I mean, matter. There, there, is a, there is a hard problem with consciousness. I say there's also a hard problem with non-consciousness. But I don't think that, I, I personally never heard Chalmers talk about the differences between the two in the sense that one of them is hard and one of them is not hard. Like, he, from what I understand Chalmers mm. saying yeah. is that the fact that we, red is red. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, impossible exactly. to explain in terms of just like physical things, physical things absolutely, coming into absolutely. Being. Absolutely. Totally And agree. I think yeah. that Bernardo yeah. Kestrup, like, are you familiar with his work? No. no. So you should look into Bernardo Kestrup. Yeah, He's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. So he, mm. he uh, you know, the, the all all the educational ac accolades are there. He has two yeah. PhDs, yeah, 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 yeah. one in philosophy, one in computer science. Yeah. He worked for CERN for many years. Yeah. He built computers from scratch. Yeah. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah. And. Um, He wrote a few books. In all his recent interviews, he's talking about this thing where he basically brings back realism, mm -hmm. uh, like f the, the philosophy of realism. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he says that the reason you can't solve it is because you just, you got the whole thing upside down. Mm -hmm. It's because, which is essentially what I'm trying to say, but yeah, slightly yeah, yeah. differently, yeah. which is that you will never solve it if you think you, you're looking for this explanatory gap Yeah. What you don't realize is there's no gap. It's just that the thing that you think that arises yeah. is the fundamental thing. Yeah, so like yeah, yeah. consciousness itself is the most fundamental thing. Yeah. And he's yeah. not talking about it just in terms of like general philosophical terms. Yeah, yeah, But he actually says that you can, you can have all the field equations mm -hmm. and everything yeah. else we understand yeah. arise from this in initial moment of consciousness. Yeah. But now you have one problem instead of two because you you have only the big bang it's yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. you know yeah. uh, consciousness goes away like that's not a problem anymore yeah, yeah. now it sounds like a cheat but when you start looking at it like you know this you know this phrase you are what the universe is doing where you're sitting you are what <laughs> you are yeah. what the universe is doing where you're sitting right now okay Okay, you heard this before? No, no. Okay, no, no. well, think about this for a second. <laughs> think about this phrase for a second. You are mm -hmm. what the universe is doing exactly where you're sitting right now. Okay, so now if you let this dawn on you, mm -hmm. it's actually quite profound because mm -hmm. this is for sure happening in the universe, right? yeah, whatever yeah. it might be. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever this is behind my eyes yeah, yeah. is the universe doing whatever it's doing. Yeah. So in that sense, I am the universe. Now I'm not the entire universe, yeah, 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 yeah. but yeah. I am this tiny piece yeah. in the universe. Now, yeah. in the Western world, we look at this statement and we say, oh, that's so cute, you know, or like, uh, that's, that's such a nice inspirational thing. Yeah. But if you stop doing that for a second, you think about it seriously, yeah. that's actually true. That's actually true. Whatever, whatever it might be the case about yeah. the how it arises, or whatever, mm -hmm. you are literally the universe doing this, including your experience and everything else. Because it's not separate. There's no separation between the, the, the in, in the moment of your, your experience, yeah. the physical and the, the mental, forget about definitions. Yeah. However it happens, yeah. it is happening as you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, the universe, I, I, the, w one of the things which... Um, Just like it what, makes what, what, black holes, yeah. it makes what you're experiencing right now. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I mean, oh, mm, yeah. Mm. Wait, so where, where, okay, so where, no, 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 but let's nail this down. Yeah. Where is the logical, where's the fallacy here? Where's the logical problem here? 
because this statement is true. Like, there's, there's no way around that. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to sort of get, get because um, one of the other sort of big wake-up moments I had in my life okay. was when I was, uh, 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 I was walking to, to work and I was looking up at this skyscraper and I suddenly realized that thing is inside my head. And that was, bam, I mean, so Matrix and all the rest of it. And, and it's another one of those things which is kind of undeniably true, because if I close my eyes, that skyscraper disappeared. Obviously, the bricks and all the rest of it, that physical stuff, that was still there. But, I mean, what I actually experience, I don't experience that thing over there. What I experience is what my brain has created on the basis of the photons entering my eyes and, and reconstructed and given three dimensions or whatever else, in spite of the fact that I've got a two-dimensional retina, etc., etc. So what, I mean, you as well, Yeah. you are inside my head, in my, inside my head. Yeah. I mean, obviously you're there as well. I mean, I'm yeah. assuming you're there. Well, well no, no, <laughs> but, but, this, this, is, this is when the mindfuck starts happening. Because it's literally like you, it's in, the, so the skyscraper is in your head. Yeah, exactly. But also your or at least so, what, no, 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 so, no, so, so the so the world is in your head <laughs> exactly yeah but also your head is in the world yeah so it's like so yeah. right yeah so, okay so now this is where you and uh, this is important for me to nail down because yeah. for a long yeah. time yeah. my brain would do the same thing yeah. because I was so immersed in the physicalist perspective yeah. 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 when I would reach this place yeah. I would just go like. What a neat trick. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I would leave it at that. <laughs> not realizing that I'm living the most profound realization right now. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because yeah, it's yeah. not, yeah. oh, what a nice trick. It's yeah. like, it's almost like the universe waits for now, you to what, go. What I really think is the neat trick about it is, is that, I mean, it's, it's kind of necessary, of course. I mean, I, as, as animals, I need to believe, I mean, apart from that, I've no, got no, 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 no choice. I, I, I need to believe that this is a glass. This is what this I'm is, seeing. Yeah, but this and is it, also... because I move my hand, and it contacts this physical object, and it works. So it's got to be true. It's a bit but, like sort of the, 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 the rubber. Huh? But you don't even know how you're doing this, right? How I'm doing it? I don't. You don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. Okay. How <laughs> how is this happening? <laughs> like I want. To, I will my hand up and down, right? Yeah. How is it happening? Now this is this is this is. Uh, the 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 um, the way in which, in, in my my view, huh? yeah yeah yeah, going back to the sort of computers. I mean, computers can do that as well. They can also move things up and down. Uh, no depend- no no. But how does it translate from you wanting the hand to go up to yeah. it actually happening? Yeah, but I mean, it's it's sort of comparable in the sense that the logical functions, and they are very logical. That's the whole point. Computers are designed to be sort of very strictly rule based logical, mm-hmm. because otherwise you couldn't design them. Be bit, I mean, except for AI systems, they get a bit messy, and uh, artificial neural networks. But then you, yeah, I'm not really talking about programming, but programmed systems. They're sort of designed in ways which follow very strict logical rules, which allow us to get the right output, the output went from the Absolutely, inputs. but the computer doesn't but have our, an experience accompanying. No, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But, but our, and, and, and so that, that's the easy bit, the yeah, problem, yeah, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. understanding how computers work, but also there that you notice that a computer is not a physical device, it's an informational device, right, th- which is agree. implemented through yes. a physical medium. If you translate that to, to, the, to the brain, you see basically the same thing. So we've got, in our brain, we've got mil- millions and millions and millions of synapses and neurons and all the rest of it. And an individual synapse or an individual neurotransmitter packet which is released to do something informationally also has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. Okay. I mean, it's all far too simple. So there, that's also the level at which those quirks, those fundamental components of information are created in the brain. And in the brain as well, because, because those things are totally pointless, totally useless, they're going to have to be organized in hierarchical ways to create additional levels of organization where the additional level of organization have their, each have their own properties which are also done the basis for the next level up and so forth and so forth. Until at one point in that whole universe which is created, informational universe which is created by our brains, some parts of it have this really amazing property of phenomenal consciousness. A lot of them don't. I mean, there's a hell of a lot which is going on inside here, which 
I haven't the faintest idea, I've got no access to it consciously, but it is happening. I know it because I, I can see the effects of it. Right. I mean, not, not just reflexes, but, but, right, right, but, right. but actually information processing things going on in my brain, which I cannot be aware of. I mean, that, that's one of the things with, with meditation, whatever, that you can actually gain access to aspects. What is potentially th conscious. Things, things which are going on yeah. which you're not normally actually capable yeah. of being conscious of. So, so that's the, sort of where that, that, that was the hard and the easy problem for me comes. I sort of see that whole information realm which my brain is creating, consciousness as being a special part of that, but only one special part of it, and all the rest of it is also bloody special, but much more difficult to grasp because we, we've got absolutely no way of accessing that. We can't, we can't observe it consciously, we can't observe it with physical instruments, because it's not a physical thing. Oh, I see thing. what you're saying. So in that regard, it so is objectively complete, more, much, much in the bigger dark. mystery. Yeah. Completely in the dark. So the so question for you, what is what is uh, <laughs> what can we do with your model mm. that we couldn't do without you? Um, understand ourselves, I guess. <laughs> so so no, I, no, I me, no, it's larger than that because I mean, again, I mean, computers do it, humans do it. Um, but it started long, long ago, um, sort of in the history of life, because the, 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 as I see in the case, um, all of these information things cannot exist through purely physical processes. Okay. Because a purely physical process is only a matter of two entities interacting for what they are at that moment and having a particular effect, sticking right. together or bouncing off each other, whatever. Evolution makes it possible to create systems both which have very complex physical functions but is in my view the only way in which it is possible to create things which do not are not purely based on physical interaction but are based on information because you need that cumulative effect and the fact that I mean it starts with the hormones for instance the hormone is is, an, is also an information carrier I mean, if I have a, um, I have a hormone from which is produced by my liver when my blood sugar is too low, that hormone itself, it's not the physical properties of that hormone which matters, it's the fact that that hormone represents a, bl a blood sugar level. Mm. And that goes to another part of my body, and the other part of my body says, oh, blood sugar level's too high. That's got absolutely nothing to do with insulin. Yeah. It has to do with the, with the information which is carried, and that's where it started. And of course, when neurons came along and started interconnecting, then it really exploded because that allowed not only um, transfer of information, but also processing of information. Yeah. And the only reason why we can build computers which do the same things is because we're evolved creatures that are capable of designing things with our brains. But are you familiar with Michael Levine's work, by the way? Mm, He's a no. biologist. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, another guy. I know, I, I yeah, the name you. rings a bell, but I couldn't Yeah, yeah, yeah. so he, yeah. he's uh, yeah. kind of revolutionizing uh, yeah. uh, Engineer, uh, uh, biological engineering at the moment. Yeah, yeah. They're kind of like on the cusp of finding a cure for cancer, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but basically, he discovered that a lot of the commands you can give organisms yeah. uh, have very little to do with their uh, hardware, so with their mm. genome. Yeah, and yeah, almost yeah, everything yeah. to do with their software. Like you can yeah, actually send. Yeah, yeah. So you have to if you have to ask yourself, where's this computational layer happening? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's he says that we now know enough about biology to yeah. understand that yeah. actually, if you look at like every single portion of like specialized area of the body of any yeah. organism, yeah. Yeah. it does not know the shape of the whole body. No, no. So what does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of like, and that, that actually plays very nicely. Into yeah, your, <laughs> yeah. No, no, actually, this is, this is where I start, because I, I studied biology, and, and uh, I graduated in 82, I think, which was at the, about the time when people started to talk about chaos theory and all the rest of it. So I had a very mechanistic biology, bio, biology degree. And I thought it was absolutely brilliant what we all knew, but it was so totally dissatisfying. So I just sort of thought, this is not the story. No, it And that very basically, one of the most, the most ridiculous fictions uh, currently is the idea you are your genes. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's I ridiculous. mean, hello, how much information is in your genome? And what is that information? That information is nothing more than coding for a number of polypeptide sequences. Yes. 
That's all it is. Yeah. What are you? Are you just a, a heap of polypeptide sequences? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And self-organization of, of, of living organisms, the cell, but particularly multicellular organisms, where every one of your cells has the same genetic information, and yet somehow your body, as an entire thing, when you cut your skin, somehow your body Knows. manages to yeah. instruct the, the cells in your skin to do what is necessary to reconstruct a system which has no design. Yeah. Yeah, no. It, that's, it, that's why I start. That, no, that, so, he, actually, so, yeah. so they, they do some pretty crazy experiments. But anyway, that's, 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 yeah. So, no, so, no, that's, it's fascinating. <laughs> so so um, one of the things that Michael, what they do in their lab is yeah, that yeah, they yeah, take, yeah. Um, yeah. let's say they take a frog, yeah. uh, they implant the cells that build an eye yeah. in the back of their leg. Yeah. And what's interesting is that that eye yeah. not only will become a full-fledged eye, yeah. uh, if you don't have enough of the cells to yeah. make the eye, yeah. they will recruit uh, yeah. adjacent cells that yeah. don't know how to make an eye, yeah. but they will recruit them to arrange themselves into yeah. an eye, yeah. and then they would find the spine, yeah. and they would connect to the brain, and yeah. the brain will learn how to look yeah. from the leg. Yeah. So this whole idea that the genome just kind of knows yeah. like general it's like totally vectors, ridiculous. it's like totally ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And this is why, by the way, uh, Richard Dawkins is so always so interesting to me because he, yeah. when he was young, he was such a radical thinker. Yeah. I mean, he came up with the idea of the memes. I mean, now yeah. you know, kids think of memes as like the, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty pictures, but yeah, the, yeah. The, the the funny yeah. memes. Yeah. But memes are essentially the small the smallest idea yeah. of of of. And information, so yeah, like they're, they're exactly, yeah, right. Yeah. So it can be replicated yeah. just like a gene. Yeah. And that was such a revolutionary idea because yeah. he himself talked yeah. about how it's what it means is that there's some kind of a different layer. So replication yeah. doesn't even have to be physical. Yeah. Like no, this, exactly. This is, yeah. Exactly. But then yeah. now yeah. in later years, you look at him and it's just like this old fart who yeah. just like, thinks everything is bullshit. <laughs> it's like what? What is happening? It's like, I guess it just yeah. You like you become more rigid. Yeah, yeah or, or whatever. I mean, I think I mean, perhaps everybody's got one 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 big discovery in them. A lot of musicians as well. They have one. No, yeah, one. but but it's his whole attitude. Like yeah, I yeah, remember, yeah, yeah, there was a conversation yeah, with him yeah. and Jordan Peterson, and Jordan Peterson yeah. dared to tell him that he thinks that when you smoke DMT, you can actually see deeper into the yeah, yeah, constituents yeah. of the thing. Yeah, yeah. And he straight up told them, like, "Come on, this is bullshit." I'm like, "Yeah, I, open your mind." <laughs> yeah, but it's not that. It's like that's your retort. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Break yeah. it down. Yeah, like, yeah, why yeah, is it yeah, bullshit? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, what, yeah, something. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so. W yeah. One last thing I want to ask you about this. Yeah. So now, like you, re you keep developing your research, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where does it stand now? Like, what's the next big thing that you you're hoping to achieve with? Like, where do you want to push this? Now that the, the um, I want one thing is, um, and and yeah, honestly, I I couldn't have dreamed five years ago. I couldn't have dreamed that I'd be where I am now because I mean I've been mucking around with this for 20 years. Uh, and I actually wrote, um, yeah, the, the, the whole thing really sort of started. I had my train journeys back and forth to, to work in Amsterdam. And I spent all those journeys uh, just sort of writing, just trying to sort out this for myself. Because what I noticed was I, was I was thinking and thinking and thinking, and after a while I thought, hang on, I've thought that before. Hmm. <laughs> so I was all kind of around in circles. So I got to put this down on paper so I can actually build it up and build it up to, to a complete story. So that's what I did in those train journeys, and um, I actually, it actually f finished in a book of 500 pages, about, uh, which is just the whole story. Whoa. Um, so, uh, and, and basically, sort of my, my journey to reach that conclusion kind of thing mm -hmm. at that point, in any case. Um, and I, I, I sent it off to a couple of publishers on the off chance, well, and basically, well. they, they all sort of said, yeah. Uh, you write quite well, but um, let's face it, we're not going to take any risk on this. Go and get mm. it published first. Mm. So that was, that was in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I started trying to get published on, in a peer review journal. That took five years uh, before I got my first one published. And from that, I got some invitations to, to talk at an uh, international symposium last, last year, 2021. So that, that ball is starting to roll and actually finding people in these 10 million billion people running around this planet, uh, you can actually have any kind of conversation about these kind of, kind of things. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, that was, in respect, I felt so goddamn lonely for so long. 
yeah. uh, with, with those thoughts. And, and I couldn't help myself but sort of continue down that path because it was just so frustrating not to understand it, and I wanted to understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I must admit, up to, up to now, there's nobody I've talked to who has who I've managed to transfer my meme set to. Uh, sort of transfer like that. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. This is the solution. Um, and but that's not really what it's about. It's about sort of, um, I mean, we're all trying to get a grasp on this thing, which is incredibly difficult to grasp. And I think everybody has yeah, a place to play in that. And what the, ultimately, I think there must be, out of all the, the tens and hundreds of theories that are flying around there, that there must be somehow an underlying answer just because that's, well, that's how reality is. Even if we never get to it. Yeah, it yeah, be, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's got to converge at some point. But at the moment, I just sort of see us sort of, you know, sort of diverging. But I mean, they're just producing so many, um, yeah, inspirational, but, but often conflicting ideas with, where they can't all be right. It's a bit like religion or something. It's, it's, it's <laughs> that there's something there, and, and, and we've got hundreds of them hundreds of attempts to under, to explain it. Yeah. And logically, if they're conflict, conflicting, they can't all be right. They're probably, or, or all, they're probably all wrong. Or there's a, or there's a deep, deeper misunderstanding in, in what way they actually are right. But like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, well, literally, literally, in any case, to, to, to the lesser, they can't all be right because there are logical inconsistencies. But anyway, that's, that's, that's really No, 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 I'm, I'm with you. It's just <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, well, that's yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping to get a positive response from a publisher. Now, I have actually have published in peer review to actually write a, write a book. That's my plan for this year, if they, if they, uh, uh, if they go along with it. Um, and in terms of the content, yeah, I'd be kind of distracted by trying to publish the basic idea. But the, the real weakness of the idea um, is that ultimately you're going to have to provide some kind of proof. Um, and, and in that respect, sort of the physical scientists have got it bloody easy, because <laughs> I mean, it's just, the proof is just so easy to find. Oh, you, just, you, don't, you don't have to tell me. You, you just have to <laughs> I, have, I have a very similar problem. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that, that is, I mean, what I'm saying is that um, uh, sort of alongside or piggybacking on or whatever uh, on physical reality is very specific types of systems in physical reality which are based on information rather than physical processes there's this additional dimension in which all sorts of amazing things happen like a bar is created mm -hmm. with lights and mm -hmm. colors and flavors and other people sitting in there mm -hmm. talking to me and transferring information to me um, but can you imagine uh, if this is the fundamental thing? That we get it all exactly backwards? Like this, the, the coldness of glass, the blackness <laughs> of the stable, they're actually the fundamental thing. Those properties, those properties... Are yeah, but the, now, the, those, in that sense, that the, you say that the... I mean, the blackness and the heat and the flavors or whatever, okay. because those are, those are meaning. I mean, there is no... What if that's, that's the fundamental that, thing? It seems more likely to me that they're what we... Because meaning is important to us because we're animals. No, no, but that's already, no, no, hold on. But that's already a rationalization. So, like, you have to, you have to acknowledge that. That <laughs> I'm, I'm not necessarily <laughs> disagreeing with you. Yeah. I'm just saying that if we want to be... Uh, intellectually honest, yeah. what you just said is already a rationalization. So I'm talking about yes. you. I'm well, a big rationalizer. <laughs> what? We all are. I like to rationalize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but but, yeah, but, yeah. but it seems as long as there's an acknowledgement that yeah. and and I'm not, obviously this is something that you know I come from perceiving the world this way. It's not yeah, like I'm yeah, foreign yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm I'm actually now on the other trajectory, which is like I'm entertaining. Yeah. Wait a second. What if Kastrop is right? What if this is the fundamental thing? Yeah, and yeah. then everything else is us trying to explain it away, basically. But if you, but if you, if you take that path <laughs> and you sort of say, okay, my, my perception of this glass is, uh, is the fundamental. Um, how then 
perception in general. But yeah. how, how, how then? If, if I mean the, the, co- the course of aspect before. Okay. So, so this the fundamental is my perception of this. Yeah. Um, but there is actual physical material here. Surely. Maybe not. I mean silica. I mean there's there's there's. No no no. Maybe not. So so. Okay. Let well, me see what, if I can. But what what are, what are our, our um. Are scientific instruments detecting them? Our m- most current conviction. So, so. Hi. Uh, ik wel graag. Do you, do you want another one or? Uh, do you have any? This is the small. This is the smallest one, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll have one more. <laughs> Let me see if I can recapitulate. Because uh, Kestrup's model is probably the closest to help with this. So. It's hard to break down in like a few seconds, but the general idea is that there's one universal mind, or one, one. Per, there's only one perceiver. There's no, there's no you and I. What we are, we're essentially alters. So just like uh, you have uh, multiple personality disorder. Mm-hmm. So the boundary is created when, when that mind fragments into different perceivers. Mm-hmm. Which we now, by the way, know that is not only possible but happens all the time with people with multiple personality disorders. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, in dreams, I don't know if we mentioned this in our conversation, but uh, 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 somebody with multiple personality disorder, they can actually um, dream a dream from different personalities uh, yeah. uh, and they meet each other in the dream. So, the, <laughs> the two personalities. No, no, this is real. They, they would report meeting the other personality in the dream. But each, 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 of, the, each of the persons would report that to the other one then? Uh, yes. So they would tell to the researchers, oh, I met this person, but they're not aware of that person being there in real time. Mm-hmm. But when the other person reports that they saw the other person too in the dream, yeah. even though it's the same individual. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, 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 one, it's one brain. Yes, but as, or to be different as individuals. associated with one brain. Yes, yes, yes. One, yes, yeah. But one brain is is. Uh... So now we have to ask, what is a brain? So if fragment, so if different brains are already <laughs> fragmentations, they can fragment again. Yeah. Okay. So now. <laughs> yeah, I must. Be, I, I, I am uh, in that respect. I'm. I'm uh... I am holistic in, in the constructive in the constructive sense of the word. So I, I I do actually see I don't see the sort of the bottom level as all determining because it needs basically elements need to come together to create new systems. We have new properties, we have new processes and all the rest of it. But the oh no, so that's, that's the body sorry, so yeah, I didn't yeah, finish the thought. Yeah. So the idea is is that so, oh, no, no, I did send you Kestrup's uh, talk. I think you responded something to it that I wasn't sure that you watched the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, that's the guy that was, uh, he was actually explaining this, the thing with the altars and the, like the... So, okay, so the idea is that just like you have... Let me think of the best way of putting it without wasting too much time going mm-hmm. in, in circles. The idea is, is just like that you have an internal world. Yeah. And you have a physical body that I can see. Yeah. Um, the universal mind yeah. has an internal world. Yeah. But it also has a body that, that any other mind would see. But universal mind, its body is the universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So all, all, so all yeah. the inner yeah. workings that you see. So like, yeah. I know I look at you and I see a person because yeah. you kind of like me. So I'm like assuming yeah. all the things I assume about myself about you. Yeah. And then I act out of that. Yeah. But there might be minds, which, by the way, this is not such a radical idea. They're, they're, uh, you know, Stephen Wolf from like serious thinkers. Yeah, yeah. They entertain this seriously. It's like, well, yeah, 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 Anywhere yeah, there's information yeah. processing, yeah. the weather might be conscious. It's yeah, just that, yeah, yeah. that that the the way that the, their needs and pressures they're so beyond what we can even comprehend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, by the way, size matters. So like, if a planet is conscious. Yeah. Let's say there's a unit that is the size of, uh, I don't know, three light years. Let's yeah. say it's conscious somehow. Yeah, yeah. 
its perception of the world will be so radically different because of time dilation, just because of yeah. how yeah. time and space behave, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yes, it sounds out there, but if you actually go to the details, you'll discover that the, it's really not that different than what we do with each other all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's just that everything is kind of like, we have a lot of examples of things like us, yeah. so, we kinda, so it looks normal. But yeah, so you're asking what is what, so what are all the other extra things like the black holes and, the, and the, all the stuff that are not conscious in our brains and all that stuff? Yeah. That's part of the larger mind, the way it appears as a, from a third person yeah, perspective. But, but what, what, it struggle, what I struggle with with that line of thinking is a really sort of earlier sort of the the the, the problem with definitions of, of, of terms. Right. Like information can be used in many different ways. Um, and to me, that, that, that line of thinking really kind of stretches or makes less specific the definition of consciousness. Because my, 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 my it's just assumed? Because it's just like being given for granted? Like that's the granted thing? No, but I mean, I, I mean my, my, my consciousness, I experience my consciousness as very much as being uh, I don't know, I, the, the fact that I experience red or something, I mean, that, that is something which is, um, that is relevant, uh, relevant to me and therefore, and, and, and the scale of things, right? I mean, the, the sort of the, 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 the meter scale of things or whatever that we exist in, we don't, we don't live at the micro, micrometer level and we don't live, live at the kilometer level. Mm. And, and if you, if you call um, something consciousness at a cosmic level. Uh, I mean, that, that it seems highly improbable to me that that could bear much similarity to what there's no to what, similarity to, to what, what I experience as consciousness. No and then, similarity, and then it becomes a sort of a bit of a um, no, 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 a, va a vague sort of container concept. I take your point, but, but, but the idea, but the, I think, uh, I'm probably not doing justice, the explanation justice, that's yeah, it. Yeah. But, um, so let's take something specific. Mm. Uh, have, you ever, have you ever meditated at all? Sorry? Have you ever meditated at all? Have you ever done meditation at all? Like, yeah, I did, I, yeah, sort of. Sorry, um, okay. Yeah. I mean, I've, 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 I've had... Mm, mm, a few moments of altered states, but it's more through through um, uh, some, some some rebirthing therapy back in back in the day. What kind? Uh, sort of hyper, hyperventilation. Okay, and what was the? That's really trippy. Tell me. Um, the experience was um, I was uh, I mean sort of kind of yeah waking dream thing that I was actually walking on the on. on Sort of a moon landscape kind of thing, a dark, a dark surface on, on the surface of the planet, sort of featureless. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, I was, I was walking there, and there was a line on the surface. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had to stay on one side of the line hmm. because the other side, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what was on the other side, but on the other side there was. You didn't want to. Uh, I, I don't want to. It's, no, it's not the place. Not the way to go. No, no. Hmm. But it was, it was, yeah, I don't know, it, it was, it was very real in the, in the kind of lucid dreaming kind of sense. Hmm. But, I mean, I, I, I don't, there's, there's no, I mean, it was totally convincing. I was really was there, as in I, I experienced it as being very, uh, very real, as real as that we're sitting here now. But I mean, yeah, in a dream, that a, a, a kind of coherent dream, you can also have that, that you really experience it as, Utterly convincing, but that's yeah, not not a lot to be honest. I mean, I, no, I've never, never done psychoactive drugs or anything. Which you should. That's what my son always says as well. You really, sh you really <laughs> should. No, no, seriously, you really should. Like, you should. No, he's he's totally convinced as well about the, his experiences. No, no, I'm, I'm um, so look. Mm. This is like not even as a like a woohoo. Let's all do drugs. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Like I'm telling you in the sense like. It will help your line of research, like, because you can't, you can't, you can't seriously 
like want to solve like such a big problem without venturing into places where people telling you look you, you should really look yeah so yeah, like yeah. I, I highly recommend I mean you're in the right place <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um, now, it's an ongoing discussion with uh, with, with, with myself one of my sons because he's uh, I, I know you did you guys uh, what do you have legal here only truffles the, right mushrooms are not legal anymore yeah but, but yeah yeah it, it, you, you, you should yeah. go through uh, even yeah. if it's with uh, like a facilitator like somebody yeah, who knows yeah, what yeah, they're yeah, doing yeah. whatever yeah. it is yeah, my son knows that yeah. he's, he's very experienced you, yeah. you should you should do it yeah like seriously like t- take uh, one weekend do, and then I, and then I want to hear your opinion because because it opens it opens a window it's not an exaggeration of of the an, an ability of your brain that you didn't even know existed yeah yeah, yeah. it's not like it's kind of like something it's not like no, anything no, 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 it's no. just like something else no I, I, absolutely and, I, mean, I can I can I, I can but that's a data point I would expect that kind of thing but that's a data point isn't it that if your experience allows for this, then if your experience is also allowed to be in this different place that you didn't expect to be, that's a nice triangulation point. It's like, wait a second, this but, is just yeah, one... My, my, I'm not quite sure if, at the end of the show, whether I would... Um, uh, whether I would conclude that that has shown... I, I don't know what you will conclude, and I'm not trying um, to put it in your mind. No, but I mean, uh, my, my, my reasoning now sort of a priori about the different uh, experiences I'd have there is that in that it is, it's altering the biochemistry of my brain. Therefore, my brain is working differently. Therefore, I will have different experiences than I would normally. But that's a very general statement that doesn't really tell you much. But, but not necessarily that, that, I mean, the fact that there's something else is going on in my brain that, it says, that means something else is going on... Uh, <clears throat> In, in, in outside my brain. So okay, so uh, so I have some some concrete retort to that. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I don't know if you're familiar, but there was a, a set of experiments in the '60s, I think, mm-hmm. uh, '50s or '60s, mm-hmm. specifically with LSD. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's a famous set of experiments, so maybe yeah. you've heard of it. I don't know, but it's the one where uh, they brought a lot of. Um, uh, mathematicians, engineers, computer yeah. software engineers, yeah. and they asked all of them to come with a problem that we, excuse me, yeah, no, no, we working yeah. on for yeah. a long time and yeah. they couldn't yeah. solve. Yeah. And they gave them 100 micrograms of LSD, yeah. and 90 percent of them solved it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, in yeah, fact, yeah, the yeah. Intel chip was invented this way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. that is, yeah, you yeah. can't ignore yeah, this data. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, this yeah. is, this is, this is. Maybe not. Yeah. Okay. No. Absolutely. proof. No. But yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. So. So yeah. you have objective information coming yeah. in. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I, I I have a friend uh, Andres uh, Gomez, <laughs> mm-hmm. who's the head of the Qualia Institute in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. He gave this brilliant talk uh, uh, in Harvard, because yeah. uh, he he originally came from you know mathematics, yeah. uh, and he gave this talk where he created a model. Yeah. He took. Um, the DMT space and what people yeah. report on DMT on different levels, like yeah. how much DMT, you, uh, you know, the different visuals that people experience, all that stuff. Yeah. And he mapped it on, he calculated what it would take uh, to take a surface, like a topological surface, yeah. uh, with uh, fractals. And then he calculated how much energy it would take to actually bend uh, those hyperbolic surfaces to different things and what kind of what kind of fractals it would manifest on that level of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And he mapped it on the DMT space and he found that in seven levels it matches exactly what he would expect. So yeah. he was saying that if you if you think of DMT giving the brain more energy, yeah, 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 yeah. it actually maps exactly to those geometric patterns that we would expect yeah, to see. Yeah, yeah. And I originally caught the contact because he was trying to steal man the idea that it's all mind made. So originally I contacted him to tell him yeah. that he's wrong, but, <laughs> but uh, we started talking, we, we became friends, yeah. and um, and he just recently he just disclosed this like uh, four days ago. Yeah. This is new, brand yeah. new. Yeah. He actually discovered that you, when you smoke DMT, in random patterns, he can actually prove that you gain access to objective information. 
Mm -hmm. So I can send you the paper. But yeah, yeah. Uh, and what's interesting is that he's not on my side of the no, trench. No, 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 no. He's on your side of the trench. Yeah. He's trying to prove that it's all physicalist and it's all like. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I did not expect that. Yeah, yeah. So the point is that there seems to be objective information coming through this. So I don't think you 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 are. I don't think you're at liberty to not try this. <laughs> that, that's what I think. <laughs> that's, that's my that's my that's my conclusion. So now, obviously, there's like a lot of ramifications here and everything. But I do think that, look, the reason. Okay, by the way, do you want to you want to see something funny? Because yeah, you're talking about sort of basically your your your, your axiomas, which is you're starting with your, your whole mental construction about okay what the fuck is going on around here um, I must admit my I, I'm not a reductionist in the sense that I think that everything can be explained at a lower level absolutely not uh, much more holistic in the sense of um, every level has its own phenomena process we, we, whatever either else either way we agree there up and up and up but ultimately that that, that is a sort of a constructive process whereby Simple things combine to form more complex things, and and so forth, up up, up until the scale of the universe, the galactic clusters, all the rest of that. And and um, in that sort of the constructive combination of entities to create um, higher level levels of organisation, which have their own properties. Um, obviously, what we're doing now is also a very uh, is an informational form of interaction. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, okay, we, shook, we shook hands or whatever, but I mean, what's actually going on here now is not physical, it's the interchange yes, yes, of information. Yes. No, so, look, so, so we, don't, we don't need to establish that. We yeah. established we're full agreement there either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah what is happening yeah. between you and I right now is not physical. Yeah. It exists in some other space. I mean, we're using physical medium yes. to do it because otherwise, yeah, how do you do it elsewhere? But I mean, what is actually, what's significant is happening is not the fact that we're creating vibrations in the air. I mean, so bloody well. The, 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 what's important is that that is transferring information from me to you mm -hmm. and from you to me. And... Um, uh, what, I've, what I do find fascinating is the question of what is the next level up um, and uh, to be honest quite often I'm, I'm a bit pessimistic about that mm. um, because you see if you look at sort of the next level up at the, at the group level of what humans do then what I see is that often um, the group is a lot less intelligent than the individual so it's not actually going upwards in terms of uh, um, intelligence or consciousness or whatever actually it's actually sort of losing intelligence I mean mm. warfare I, I think is the, 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 the best example the most tragic example of that yeah but people Anybody, fight hmm? it's not different it's just like a bigger level of that because people fight individually that's not very different it's just a reflection of the of the individual yeah, but in warfare, you get the top-down effect of the declaration of war causes people to fight who wouldn't otherwise fight. Yeah, but that's because it's a fractal of the thing that includes the unit. So you, a fractal has to be able to include a, a, the shape of the, the, the thing that it make, that makes up it, right? Mm -hmm. so, like if, so the reason that a war can call an individual is because an individual knows what a fight is. Otherwise, you won't be able to call that individual. But it is, is, isn't true. is warfare a sort of a scaling up of individual aggression, or is it something else? Yes. I, I think it's in, it, it, like, in this, like, yeah. Or is, is, like, is it not something which we as, which takes place at the level of sort of the human colonies that we are a part of? I don't understand the question. Um... Yeah, but the, the, the question applies partly to consciousness. Cause, I mean, I think the, the sort of, yeah, bring it back down a bit. I mean, never mind sort of the, the global. No, go as global big as community. you want. I just don't understand the question. But, but, yeah. but if you just, oh, we have, there are now two consciousnesses mm -hmm. which are now informationally connected. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's sort of enri enriching both, both of us through mm -hmm. what's going backwards and forwards. But I mean, that is still two individuals. You asking me? 
What are you saying there? Yeah, or, or yeah. sort of at the next level up, is, is, is there already something which is more than us, uh, more, not just more in, in, in quantity, but something different than, the, than what we are? And if so, how is, how is that different and what is it? In the highest level, if you ask me, yeah. uh, you're me and I'm you. So, so actually there's no two consciousnesses sitting here. This is consciousness interacting with itself. But you're not conscious. But you're not... I mean, I can, I can communicate some of my conscious experiences to you and then you can assume that you understand me and also then therefore... No, by but, proxy, but, 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 but you, you're using the human dimension to try and understand it. Imagine yeah. waking up in yeah. a room alone. Yeah. You look around, yeah. there's this infinite space, and let's pretend that you go like this and something just happens. And you're yeah. like, hmm. And then you keep doing this and things yeah. just happen. And you're like, no matter how much you look, there's no one around. Yeah. You don't remember when you weren't and all you do is it happens like every time you conjure something it just happens yeah and then you're like okay i don't understand what's going on here i want to understand yeah so you start fragmenting yourself into different perspectives so you can try and <laughs> kind of come to like a thing and that's what you get so quite literally we're God experiencing itself in a different perspective. So, by the way, just so you understand, this is something that if you would ask me, like, uh, you know, even a year ago or two yeah, years ago, I'd yeah. be like, the fuck out of here, right? <laughs> but now I'm like, wait a second. So, first, okay, so, to be fair, just to, to be, like, you know, to, to, um, to use an olive branch here, I have full sympathy for the, the, the difficulty to take something like this on board. Yeah, yeah. And actually, if I wouldn't be exposed to everything that I'm exposed, yeah. I wouldn't be entertaining any of this. Yeah. But I'm telling you that there seems to be something else being in play here. Mm. And, and by the way, I can also tell you with a certain amount of certainty, mm. that very, very soon, mm it will manifest itself in such a way that it, it, there's going to be <laughs> hints and then full-fledged expositions mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. in, in way more like aggressive ways. Explicit. Like in this, yeah. hmm? Explicit or aggressive. Explicit, yeah. Explicit is a better word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and... So, so, for example, you're saying that, you know, you, you had this very realistic experience of, like, being on this planet and... Mm -hmm. What is it about that experience, if you have to point to it, mm -hmm. that was more realistic to you than, let's say, a dream? And, I, I mean, I can make yeah, some that, guesses, that, which my, is, like, my, it's a little vague. Yeah, my, my conscious state, basically. That, that right. was, it, it was, it was say, like lucid dreaming, that you're actually, you're conscious of what you're doing. Yeah. To an extent, you're uh, you're more able to control your actions than in a dream. So I could I could have chosen to walk over that line or not. Mm. That that was actually a, I had that that control over over what my whatever it was that was walking there was doing. Mm -hmm. um, so that 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 made it different than a dream. A dr dreams. They're a little bit more like self-controlled and yeah, exactly. Also the, the control. The, the other control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, no, I've had, I mean, I've had sort of very, I mean, often, often you have very co coherent, regular dreams. It's just that, I mean, I could, this could be a dream kind of thing, but then I wouldn't be able to determine what's, what's happening in that dream. Yeah. So then somebody else, somebody would walk, yeah, now, even what I do, that, that's not under, under my own control in a, in a, a normal dream. But right, here right. I was in control. So it's just the rigidity of the environment yeah. and like... But, but get, get, yeah, so get, get, getting back to your... Your global consciousness. I mean, okay, in the beginning was. In the beginning was uh, a universal consciousness. That's all there is. But what is that made of? What what is the stuff of that? No, no. But but that. But no, no, no. But it's to say, But that's that that is the one 
that is the one thing at the moment that I can answer. But just like you don't know what was before the Big Bang. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's no way of answering that because by definition, math breaks down, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you have the same problem. And, and time. I mean, you have no before because time starts. But, but that's exactly yeah, the yeah, point, yeah, that yeah. right now you have that problem yeah, yeah, yeah. plus the hard problem of consciousness. Yeah. In this model, you don't have the hard problem of consciousness. You're just saying, no, <laughs> that, is, that is the initial problem. Yeah, but then, then you have the, the opposite causation, ca causative uh, question. I mean, it's not how, how does matter create consciousness, then the question is how does consciousness create matter? Okay. Is that any easier? Okay, so let me so let me give you maybe like this. I was kind of reluctant of like even bringing that up, but uh, because of, because we have a good thing going, I don't want to lose it. Um, but okay, so I'm actually so I'm releasing a new video right now on this laser subject, yeah, 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 yeah. and I'm recording some inserts right now, yeah. and I'm actually still not sure I'm going to put it in the video. Yeah. And depending on whether or not I'm going to put it in the video or not, it will also depend on what I'm going to put, leave this in the video, but I'm going to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if I'm going to release it in the video, I'll also leave it here. But if yeah. not, at least you, you, you will hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the reason I am convinced yeah. that what I'm saying is correct yeah, yeah. actually has nothing to do with the laser. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The laser is a sideshow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is where... I have no way of proving this to you, yeah. uh, but and this is also why I'm still reluctant to whether or not I should put it in the video. Yeah. The only reason I'm thinking about it is because I just want to stay very uh, honest yeah. about what's going on yeah. without like taking things away. Yeah. It's hard for me to say. <laughs> come on, come on, you can do it. <laughs> no, I will. It's just like yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's the yeah. deal. Uh, two months after I built the laser. Yeah. I smoked DMT one day, and an object appeared in my living room. Yeah. No, you didn't. If you just said, yeah, you didn't hear me. <laughs> an object appeared in my living okay, room. Okay, okay, yeah yeah yeah, 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 okay. So, and uh, it's an, like an elongated egg thing yeah. that just opens up, yeah. and it opens up into sections, and then there's sections all over the room that opened up also. And then from the middle, yeah. a podium comes out, yeah. With screens that spread around me. Yeah. I can see it as clear as I can see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine Tony Stark augmented reality stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah. It just like hovers around me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens 100% of the time. Yeah. So now, that coupled with the fact that the communication that I'm receiving from that side when I'm actually smoking it now yeah. is so coherent. Now, you can always chuck it to. We don't know how, but it, it somehow it created this thing with your brain, and now you like it, it manifests anything you think it is. I never had a preference that this is a simulation. I this is, yeah, was the yeah. furthest from my mind. Um, so, to the extent that I want to take this very concrete communication, the way I'm experiencing it, yeah. seriously, I'm being told directly that that's what's going on. Yeah. So now. The other thing that I'm being told, and time will tell if this is correct or not. But, but oh, let, I mean, let you, me finish this thought. Yeah, yeah, you, but you're, you're saying okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You, you, uh, you're in that room, and um, some thing was created in that room. Yes, but but it's the way it appeared that matters because it has its own special coordinates. It's just like an yeah. object. I can walk yeah, yeah, around yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. So it's a, yeah, yeah. a coherent thing. It wasn't Very really coherent. Right. Yeah. If I'd been in that room and I hadn't been spoken, had I, would I have seen it? No. And how then, what is the difference between that and the things which we would have both seen in that room? Uh, what do you mean? Well, we would have both seen the walls and the, the chair that you're sitting on and, oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. But I wouldn't have seen that and you would have seen that. So first of all, to, uh, to take a tiny detour before answering your question directly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people do report seeing the same thing in the same room on DMT. That happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what you're saying about the consistency of that, of that laser No, no, thing, no, that happened. No, no, but without the laser. People do okay, report okay. see objects, in yeah. the, but it's haphazard. It happens sometimes. Yeah, but people yeah, report yeah. this. Yeah. They're like, we can see the same thing. 
Okay, so that happens, first of all. Okay, okay, I'll still see Second of yeah, all, yeah, yeah. but in this particular case, yeah. so I spoke to, at this point, thousands of people on Reddit. Yeah. Uh, also very experienced psychonauts, they've been doing, you know, psychedelics their whole life. Mm. Uh, so some people did report seeing screens, but nothing that coherent and nothing that happens. Mine is like opening a laptop. Like if I smoke DMT right now, yeah, yeah. it follows me anywhere. Yeah, what, it just it, opens it, up here. Yeah, yeah. And I can see extra content. And what I was communicated to, I well, don't know. Like what you see, the, 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 you're talking screens as in straight up, uh, sort of flat, flat things. No, with no, no. So they look like, uh, so they look. Uh, like panels, yeah. and each one of them has like a slightly different orientation, yeah. and then there's menus that come up, like depending on where I look, yeah. the menus, they look like a set of bouquets, yeah. so imagine like an arranged bouquet yeah. opens yeah. up, yeah. and they all roll, the subjects are like rolled, so you can see all the way through, so you can literally like pick, and then if I look at one of them, it just like, it like opens up. And I look and it closes back down. I don't know what any of them means. It's like the, in this weird language. And then you, uh, I have a set of uh, two pair of gloves right here on the right. And I have a carousel of 3D, gla 3D goggles on the left. And when I look at them, they like rotate like this. And those are personality changers. It's so like one time I managed to make those work. So one of them comes up, <laughs> straight up. One of them comes up yeah. and then it, I became an African-American. Like, like that, I just, uh, to my bone, I could feel every single, I was like, I could feel the rhythm, I could feel the, I could, I could feel like I was it. Yeah. It, it just showed me, they're like, your personality? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just, yeah, we yeah. just switch in between them. Like, it's just like, it, it's just like, it's a matter of, of this. And, um, which by the way, I have one external proof of this, because one of the personalities, was uh, one of them was uh, that was the black guy. Then there yeah. was like this crazy genius who was like I could understand all those concepts. And then uh, one of them was a, a womanizer. <laughs> and it's funny because Kelsey was asleep. Yeah. And I, Daniel, I could see yeah. everything. Like I understood, I could see the matrix of the feminine. Like I could understand every single thing a woman wants and why. And I like the, my posture changed, like the way yeah, I was yeah, standing. Yeah. And then I just went and literally, I, I my hand just went over Kelsey like this and started like caressing her. Yeah. And I could see the full schematics of like the feminine structure. Yeah. And I just with one hand I started like I literally started conducting her like with one hand. Yeah. And she woke up and she just went crazy. <laughs> and she's like, what? at the end she was like, what the fuck was that? I was like. I mean, we we have a lot of fun, but that was that was that was that was a different, different level. That was a different level. So I so I have so I have positive proof from the outside. Um, so but but this is but this is what's going on, right? So now it's actually very diff difficult to operate the the whole thing. I usually just ignore it if I smoke, yeah, yeah. because it's very tasking on the on the mind. In fact. If I do it for five minutes, I'm like exhausted. Because yeah. I think what it's designed to do is to train certain attentional portions that we don't know we have, like yeah, in our yeah, brains. Yeah, yeah. And it's giving me immediate feedback. It's like what works, yeah. what doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what I've noticed is that there's, there's one component that's very interesting that seems to be operating the whole thing. So you know how when you blink, your attention resets? Yeah. yeah. So you can actually reset your attention without blinking. So like you have physical blink, yeah. but you also have attentional blink. Yeah. So you can actually blink with your attention and yeah. then everything resets. Yeah. So if you bring something into view in this menu set, yeah. and then you blink with your attention, it goes back. So you like, and then you have to bring, and you literally have to keep your attention uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. it to like stay there. Otherwise you lose it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so yeah. it teaches you to like hold the attention on the thing and then it all kind of slows down. So anyways, this is my, this is my reality now, right? Yeah. So now, the laser, that's a great aid because I can yeah. show other people. Yeah. And the, you know, when people see it, it's just like, there's, there's no way around it. Like you, you become yeah, convinced yeah, yeah. immediately. But that's why I now understand <laughs> what they're trying to do by, if I'm, okay, so I don't know if you're aware but uh, are you familiar? Are you aware that there's like a giant ramping up in the UFO phenomena? 
No. Okay, no, so no. this is something maybe you, you okay. should also know. Yeah. Then in the last year, mm -hmm. there's this giant ramping up of, uh, first of all, this, the how much pilots are willing to come forth and like talk about it. Mm -hmm. But there seems to be this like enormous uptake of, yeah. of, of noticing UFOs and seeing UFOs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now the government is like fully engaged with like trying to figure it out because they don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So I actually, I'm not 100% sure that there's a connection between what I'm experiencing and that. Yeah. But what I can tell you is that this trend that is, seems to be coming, mm. which is that a lot of intellectuals who before that wouldn't even touch this thing, mm, mm. now talking about this very openly, mm. and they're saying the ones that kind of know what's going on, for example, Eric Weinstein, you know who he is? Mm. Okay, so Eric Weinstein is, um, he was the manager of uh, Teal Capital. Mm -hmm. So he's, you know, he's a known intellectual, but he's also like, he's a serious guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a long time, he was, he was saying that people would, was appro were approaching him from this like world mm -hmm. and saying, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna brief you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And every, every time it would break down, like something would happen and it yeah. wouldn't happen. Yeah. So about almost a year ago, yeah. He tweeted, I was briefed, mm -hmm. I now understand the reason for the secrecy, mm -hmm. and then there was a whole Twitter thread, mm -hmm. and in one of the questions somebody said, so do you think that we're going to find out in our lifetime? Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, you're not going to have to wait quite that long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that component matches exactly with what I'm saying from the space. Because from what I understand from them, is that we've reached a stage now mm -hmm. that we're about to be let in on the secret. Yeah, yeah. And this is actually what, what this is, is like part of the part of the whole operation. Yeah. And by 2025, we're supposed to start seeing uh, like big things. Like they, yeah. they're gonna slowly acclimate us yeah. to like those, the fact of what actually is happening. You're talking about they, this, is, this isn't the cosmic consciousness, this is, and, uh, the Galactic Federation, and, and, and yeah, I presume it's, it's a, a, a yeah, presumably a more advanced or in any case somewhat, somehow different civilization than us. Yes, they are. Uh, they're cloaking this portion of the. They're cloaking our pocket of the universe. They're cloaking the rest of the universe from us, essentially. But how? Because they. That's. Sounds kind of. I mean, obviously, yeah, in, in quantitatively kind of different to us, but qualitatively fairly similar. Uh, how, how how do they relate to us then within the global consciousness? So there's a hierarchy. Or the cosmic, whatever. No, so I'm. I just mean, are they also sort of a? Um, so the cosmic sort of one, consciousness. One, one is of the one of the fragmentations, but then there that part of it and we're this part of it? So from what I'm seeing is that, uh, so everything I told you so far is something yeah, that yeah. other people kind of like, that's their models, right? Yeah, Bernard yeah. Orchestra, but what I'm telling you now for me, what yeah, I'm yeah, actually saying yeah, yeah, yeah. is that um, the universal consciousness is computer software. So the, th so the thing that your mind is made out of and my mind is made yeah, out yeah, of, yeah, yeah. they are a special software that each uh, it has certain components yeah. that creates these like self-referencing vectors yeah. that every few of them, like three or four of them, create minimal conscious unit that allows for this inness, like this like me versus out like yeah. thing. And then the more of those you collect together, the more degrees of freedom it has, and the more uh, 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 like ways of operating it has. And that in your brain yeah. is what the collection of those degrees of freedom looks like when it reaches that stage. So now, the, the, the biggest thing I've ever seen from them was you have hierarchies. Mm -hmm. It's not like one civilization, there's like, you know, there's a zoo of civilizations. Yeah. But the highest civilization in existence, seven on the Kardashev scale, I don't know, like they can make universes like that, like it's nothing, right? They reach the highest level of technological sophistication and they basically can do anything that is possible. But 
they can't do one thing. They still can't answer why. They don't know why everything exists. That is the one final unanswered question. So what they did is they put all their technological sophistication to try and answer that question. How do you go about that? Well, they're running a very large number of simulations. We're being one of them. And then they're looking at what each of the beings in all those different circumstances saying about their predicament. Saying in, in all the senses, scientific theories, no, no. stories, whatever it is. They want to see if no matter how different the circumstances are, when conscious beings evolve in that space, what are they saying about what they think is going on? And then they're running this enormous, super hyper AGI, whatever it is, that tries to find one common denominator. Yeah, I have one, to always, one yeah, factor yeah. of all the stories that seem to be kind of like central. I kind of understand why I like Douglas Adams. <laughs> that's exactly it. So I think so I think that's so I think that's why the 42. Not because 42 means something, but because that's what they're interested in. Yeah, or they, there is something that they will yeah, get, they're yeah, whether it's 42 or 33. So, uh, the, the, there there's a, a core somewhere, something there, there is a common a common denominator, whatever. Yeah, because uh, think about it this way. Yeah. Like, what it, forget about like scientific <laughs> talk for a second. Think about this this way. If the, if there's whatever we find out, there's still an answer. There's an actual answer. Like, th how crazy is that? That there's an actual answer to why everything exists. That's the craziest thought. Yeah, well, what, what I always struggle with the, the, these, these sort of philosophical things is I think the distinction between uh, answer and meaning and, and, and that as humans we're always looking for, for sort of justification, for meaning, for, for, for um, you say, the, the why. Yeah. Um, the idea and that I'm, maybe there is no why is just a cop out. I feel like it's a cop out. <laughs> I feel like it's a lot of smart people who sit down and couldn't figure it out, and they go, "Well, maybe there is no why," because I can't figure no, it but, out. But, uh, why? Why in the sense of? I mean, obviously, you, you need ultimately. Uh, ultimately, there, there must be a how. But the question is, is there necessarily a why? What is the difference? Can you explain the difference to me? Why, why is motivational? So wh why, no, why is why, in my why, mind, why, why is not motivational? Why is a purpose? Wh okay, so what? Maybe yeah, why? definition of the words again. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, no, but like, but it's not okay. So when I let me tell you what I think of when I'm thinking about the reason, right? Yeah, like, exactly. The reason. The reason. Yeah, yeah precisely. Yeah. No, no. So actually, no. The, the, Sorry. Is, is, the, I'm actually you, not looking in my my head. Whatever the ultimate answer is, it's not a reason. It's it's a decision because the same no that, that that's too long of a route right now um, <laughs> it's what it is is there's a certain condition yeah. or lack of conditions that somehow gives rise to everything that that exists yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. so whatever the answer is it yeah. might be this so now that takes you very far from anything that you can do anything with, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I always ask, what is the functional ramification of whatever it is that we're saying? So for example, for me, the, thing, the reason that I'm you know, saying what I'm saying is very straightforward. I'm exposed to information, I'm exposed to experiences mm -hmm. that tell me that that's the case. Mm. I'm, I'm not, this is not a preference of mine, I actually don't like it. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't like the idea. You know what I mean? I don't like the idea that I'm being simulated in a computer software. But I, it, I'm having experiences that tell me directly yeah, that yeah, that's yeah. what's going on. Yeah. So, so you you are really fascinated with the question, but but if you, but if 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 you can't think of a way, you said all, oh, but they would want to. They would need proof. The you know like the hardest yeah, scientist. Yeah, yeah. But the, you have to think of one. You have to think in which. A, a way in which it's applicable to something that even even if it solves some kind of a theoretical problem how how, how is thinking of, of information in terms of, of basic 
units, yeah. like uh, yeah. informational quarks, yeah. 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 is helping you solve something, even theoretically, better than Shannon's theory of information. No, 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 no yeah. Um, I, my, my ambition is far more modest than yours, because by definition, I mean, I am only concerned. I'm not, I mean, the big, the big, the cold universe doesn't, doesn't give a shit. I don't give a shit about it. <laughs> I mean, it's just sort of matter. But uh, what I'm interested in is, well, from this starting point, uh, what is that very, very local, specific, strange phenomenon, and how on earth can that have come to exist in a universe that is big and cold and matter and dead uh, and all the rest of it? Yeah. So, so that, that's, uh, it, I, I've, yeah, I, I'm not trying to explain everything. Yeah. And, and I'm, well, no, I'm system not either. Systemically, <sighs> the problem I have with origins is it, it, it feels a bit like to sort of say that there's, there's, there's a, a core explanation for everything that has come to exist feels a bit too much like design to me. Whereas my, my experience of, uh, uh, of reality, and I mean, that's the whole point about evolution. I mean, it's a cyclical process which creates something which cannot be predicted in advance or determined in advance. Okay. Um, and and, and, and the, a lot of, a lot of what, what, what exists is, a, is the result of a creative process rather than an, something which has been determined determined in advance. So I'm, I'm kind of... What's the problem with that? Yeah, I'm struggling with sort of the idea that there could be behind all that, that there could be a single... Be, be, because of the creation of, of information, also the creation of, of physical complexity, which, which arises through the interaction of yeah, information and also physical oh, processes. Oh no, they, they know the rules the, the, that give the, rise to the universe. They don't intervene. So they just they just make it, and yeah, they okay, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah, don't yeah. they don't touch it. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you, there's a bias in the in the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they don't touch it. Everything, every all the all the faults of our world and everything, everything else is the same. The, the, we are responsible for the state. Yeah, of it's, it's a bit sort of kind of. No, 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 no. They don't the, intervene. With the, we don't get off the hook with 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 our <laughs> responsibilities and actions. We are complete black box to them, and that's how it's set up to be. That they just want to see oh, how how it develops, how it develops, and then, what then, do we have to say about it? But, but then you have a sort of the starting condition thing about sort of the the, the, the fine tuning of the universe of our universe. No, but that might universe. actually explain the fine tuning of the yeah, universe. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because because we that's sort of the, 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 the many nuts. the many many worlds. It uh, is kind of nuts. Yeah. 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 So yeah, now yeah. Uh, look, mm. you know anybody who listens to this and says like, okay, well, what am we supposed to? Take your, your your word for, for it, wacko. Like you know, you just said you're experiencing these things, but like, but that's I, I'm telling you, I'm seeing it like I'm seeing you. Like yeah, it's yeah, not it's yeah. not like I, as far yeah. as I know, and this is a famous last words. As far <laughs> as far as far as I know, I'm not crazy. So it's like, I, and by the no, way, define crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But by the way, there's like a growing community of people that yeah, are really yeah. all experiencing very similar things. Maybe not as extreme to, to, to what I'm experiencing, but like very similar. And now you have serious institutions. I just um, in two weeks I'm supposed to go meet uh, um, uh, Anton Bilton, who's the guy who's uh, funding all the DMT research in, in uh, yeah. Imperial College in London and, yeah. and DMTX. Um, he's telling me that there's way more going on than I realize. Like, yeah, yeah. Very serious scientists are now like yeah. looking really seriously into this. Yeah. So they want to incorporate the laser thing and everything, but yeah. this is really happening. Yeah. So what I think, what I, what I guess, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to instill in in people who are a little bit more like out of the box thinkers yeah, yeah. that that you you might want to consider that we now have tools to interact with something from the other side that would actually give us hints like yeah. you don't have to operate in complete darkness there's yeah. like real information coming in yeah, yeah. exhibit a is that experiment that they did with lsd yeah. they gave you intel chip yeah. like and this is not, by the way if you actually trace back 
This is an interesting talk that Terence McKenna once gave. Yeah. If you trace back all the biggest discovery of history, really, mm -hmm. you will realize that all the Eureka moments mm -hmm. happened like that. Mm -hmm. All of them. Like people, obviously, you know, they spent hours in labs and yeah, all yeah, of that yeah. stuff, but that's right, that's right. The, the breakthroughs, yeah. all of them, all of them happen in a dream, all of them. Uh, in like a, just like a moment of like, oh, oh like, where I, I, I start mine right, in the metro station. The what? <laughs> I had mine in the metro station. Metro? Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, 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 and then you say, well, I don't you know, it came, came from yeah. my mind. Like, really, yeah. where did yeah. that come from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I've been, I've, been, I've been squeezing and pummeling and squashing my brain all the way there on the train for these two pieces of the puzzle do not fit. They do not fit. They've got to fucking fit. <laughs> and then they went click. You, thought, um, hey, of course. Oh, uh, you know how Tesla was uh, doing his experiment? I think it was Tesla. Yeah. I might be lying, but I think it was Tesla. But I mean, I, I, I get your point. I mean, you do, you, um, yeah, I mean, it's sort of the 90% perspiration, 10% inspiration thing. But where did that come from? It's um, uh, the, 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 yeah, the break, break the, the paradigm shifts which is what you're talking about. I mean, they're, they're not something you can build kind of thing. It's just that... No, not, not, not build from existing components, because, I mean, it's a paradigm shift. By definition, if you're just carrying on the same old road, yeah, you're not going to get onto a new road. Yeah. So, uh, no, it just, it just yeah. comes in this, from this extra component. Uh, and, and if you really want to get uh, theoretical here, uh, I, I was not communicated this. They well here. Yeah, yeah, if we're really going. It's, it's, in it's, for a penny, it's, in for it's, a pound. It's, uh... No, so what I want to say is that <laughs> this was not communicated to me in any shape or form, yeah, but yeah, yeah. my guess yeah. is they are actually dark matter. Isn't, isn't that matter just something they've created? The what? Something that they've created. No, so no, no. Are, are their presence, element that we just their don't presence understand? in the universe okay. is in dark matter, like they, they, they are the majority of it. So the galaxy is their city. Literally like, so they utilize all the computational layers and the energetic yeah, yeah, layers yeah. of the galaxy. Yeah. So they borrow uh, anal uh, analog computation from, from our space. Yeah, yeah. They borrow, so it's the greenest way to be, in which you allow, part of your uh, <laughs> machine chemistry is a computational matrix. So like you literally use the, utilize everything you need for your existence while allowing the, the you know the conscious being living in the, in the in the computational layers to thrive and that's why it's dark uh huh that, that's really like <laughs> highly up there but 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 the, but the one thing I do want to encourage you to do is yeah. to consider that the, the, you might be entering a stage in which you won't necessarily have to just work with just your assumptions mm. and some mathematical frameworks. Mm. Mm. You might, it, the time might have come that you'll be able to consult, I think mm. source is too loaded, mm. but you might be able to consult the space from which those ideas actually come from. Mm. Like in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a structured way, mm. not in like a haphazard, sometimes it will come to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's someone who sorted it out before. The what? Someone who sorted it out before, or who no, sort, I actually solved the think, problems that we. I don't, I don't. No, I don't think they sorted everything out. I think that the, the pro new more, problems more, more than we have. Yes, yeah. but I think new problems arise with new spaces. So we have problems in our space that they've never seen before, by definition, yeah, because yeah. it unfolds into a space of possibilities that didn't exist before. Yeah, yeah. So it's infinite in scope, yeah. but they know how problems like that go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like... They have prior experience of how, how, how to deal with these things. It's not that they've seen exactly that problem, no, 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 no. but they know what that kind of problem looks like and yeah, how it yeah, behaves yeah. and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So They've seen it before. S similar. Similar. Problem. Similar class But they will problems. let you fix it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you don't fix it, you don't survive. And that's part of the, you know... That, that's the game. That's, that's the game. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so... Listen, I, uh, 
we can we can keep chatting, but Elving, I'm, yeah. I want to yeah, I want to yeah, th yeah. thank you for uh, for doing this experiment with me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm I'm actually super happy that you told me about this place because it's uh, yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. This yeah, town yeah, is like yeah, yeah. I'm definitely coming back here. Yeah, yeah. In the summer, is it is it very different or? You mean in terms of weather? <laughs> no, in the, the way it feels like uh, maybe there's like a lot of tourists or... Yeah, you, you, the, you, the, there are more tourists obviously in the summer, but I mean, it's never really overrun like, I mean, center Amsterdam is... is yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just overrun with, with Chinese tourists. For, for, for the, they're, they're the real problem recently. The, the series is just too many. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Horn, but there's a couple of towns like Horn. You have uh, Enkhuizen down just a bit further down, and Maiden Blick. There's, there's a number of these sort of really old towns, which are sort of the, the foundation of yeah, the, the Dutch uh, West Indies Company. Uh, that's, that's who built all these things, basically. Wow. On, on, the, on slave trade. That's why the, there's, there's big dilemma, uh, dilemmas about that statue, because the statue is uh, Jan Pietersen Koen. What and he, Jan Peterson Kuhn, he's called. Okay. And he was um, he was the, the sort of the, the head man of the West um, uh, Indies Company, Dutch West oh. Indies Company. Uh, and um, yeah, to today's moral standards, <laughs> he did some dubious things. Well, and didn't, yet, didn't everybody back then? Exactly. Yeah, that's the whole point. So, so that, that, the placard is actually on the statue now. Is sort of this is not to. Um, to, to glorify what this guy did, uh, but to make us aware of um, the progress we've made. Uh, what did he do? Uh, slavery and all the rest of it. The, the, uh, the, the good old things. The, the, the standard things you did in those days. Jesus Christ. Uh, killing off whole towns because he wanted the, some resource or whatever, that sort of stuff. He brought, he brought home the dosh. The what? The, the money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, the important made, part. Yeah, it made, yeah, yeah. He built this place. Uh, people like him. Well, uh, and, and now, as you say, it's uh, yeah, it's Disneyland uh, <laughs> all over. So anybody, if if if, uh, if anybody yeah. wants to visit Horn, but yeah. don't flood it. No, but, yeah, exactly. And, but that's the advantage because we're. Um, I mean, a lot of Holland, you probably know, is under under sea level, so we have a bit of a thing with um, uh, the rising sea levels. Uh, but in fact, so if you look at look at Holland, the coast has, has always actually been land. It was just sort of basically the tributary of the Rhine and other, other big rivers. So that was actually always has been just about above sea level. And in fact, Horn, I mean, that's why this is an ancient seaport. This was actually above sea level. Mm. Because it, the, the, the water that you now see is actually a lake, it's actually fresh water. Mm. But that's just because we built a, a dike to, to um, close off the sea and gradually it's become desalinated. Oh, wow. But in fact, this was a sea, a sea port. So obviously above sea level, uh, oh, historically wow. speaking. So we're about we're we're round about sea level here, so it's going to rise a bit before it goes above the dikes that we have here. Well, it's a, it's an incredibly lovely place. But, I mean, the history we're of the sitting place is uh, drinking yeah. beer in the church, so yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.